Hey guys, welcome to another video and today we're looking at 10 pro tips for the forest. So let's get started. There are four types of armor in game. These are the standard lizard skin armor, which you can wear just straight off the bat. So you kill the lizard, cut the skin off. Basic stuff, we all know that. But then there is another type of armor, which is called stealth armor. If you put it on the center here, you can combine it with leaves, and then you will get what's called stealth armor. Now this has the same value as normal lizard armor, but also gives you a stealth bonus. We wear it here. You can see that. Pretty much like when you wear the mud you can find around the uh, map. And there's another type of armor you can make, which is twice as effective, and that is bone armor. Let's put some of that on there. Now, if you look here, or if you just hover over the cog, it tells you what, you, how you can make and what you can make. So we need six of these. What have you got in there? Plus four cloth. Combine, and you can make yourself some armor. Remove, store it there, and we will wear the bone armor. And although you can't see it, it's down on the leg down there. Just probably just about make it out. Now, you can see on the, the right hand side, it fills the slot around your stomach. There on the left hand side, there's um, the armor pips, if you like, that go around the red of your health. You can see here that the stealth armor has got like this green element to it, and the bone armor has got the white. Now, the bone armor has actually got a high hit point value, and that is 40 points. So it takes longer for the cannibals to destroy it when they hit you. Wherever you wear it, it will be a total pull that the damage comes from. So when you wear it in your arm, it protects your back, for example. There is a fourth type of armor, which is called creepy armor, which we will have a look at at some point. But it's basically the skin you strip from the large mutants who come in and attack your base or where you may meet out on your adventures. And that is like a pink flesh that goes over your body and you just take it off and you can just wear it like armor. And that gives you like a pink hip on your armor bar. And that uh, has 80 hit points, which is twice as much as the bone armor and four times as much as your lizard armor. You can pick up a pot and if you then find out a pond, you can go and fill your pot up with water, which is handy. And then you can go and put it on a fireplace and make a stew, which is what we're going to do here. Okay, let's put it on the fireplace here. And what you'll see is we have a uh, menu pop up when you scroll over it and you can click the R and it will cycle through the fish. Now we've got water in there so let's put some fish into there, very nice. And now you can mix it up with a whole range of things like adding in some mushrooms for example. You can see there you got a little menu, you've got some other mushrooms, I might put some, some of that in there and maybe had some some herbs in there like that, some marigolds, um, and yeah, and that all adds calories. It doesn't take too long to cook. And the nice thing is, this is a good use for all the bits you can gather in the game. Now, it doesn't matter what berries you put in, it doesn't matter what mushrooms you put in, it won't poison you. And in fact, you can even put rotten food in. So now it is telling me that it is ready. And you can see there's a little mouth above the pot. And we're going to grab it and 
eat it. And there you go. The pot has actually fallen through the floor. Another thing to note about the stews is you don't need to put water in in the first instance. You can mix up a whole bunch of things in there without that base of a of gathering the water. So you don't have to do that. You can use the pot just to boil things up in there and it will create its own juices, so to speak. When you're playing in game, should you build effigies? There's been much discussion about their function in the game over the last few years. And you can see there's a whole range of effigies, like this one, for example. I mean, there's a lot to them. You've got to cut off a lot of body parts. Now, it does affect your sanity. But it's also been said that there's very little effect that sanity has in game. It doesn't really uh, cause anything to happen to the player. And so the process of making these, although it lowers your sanity, it really doesn't there doesn't seem to be much effect. And in, in fact, when you have an effigy built, you have to light it if it is going to have any effect on the incoming cannibals. And it does keep some away, but then others it doesn't. And the developers of the game have actually said that there is limited function and a fuzziness to the effect of these effigies. So I tend not to use them at all. And I would advise against it, to be honest. And in fact, a good fence, a good bone fence does just as good a job as keeping away the cannibals as does a burning effigy. Now, I like to grow blueberries in my garden plots. Whenever you eat a blueberry or harvest a blueberry using your pouch, you get a chance of getting some seeds, which you can then grow in these plots, as you can see. Now, when they first appear, you will see three berries you can pick. But if you wait, that will go up, and eventually there will be nine berries that you can harvest from your plant. And you can eat them and harvest them. They are the superfood. They provide you not only with hydration, but fullness and energy as well. So they're a really handy thing to carry with you, say if you're exploring caves. So one of the more luxurious foods in game are the oysters and they're pretty difficult to find but a good spot you can come to is by the anchor uh, the big tree is up on the hill over there and over there so it's kind of between the two and if you've got the rebreather which you can find in one of the caves you can head down it's got a light on it as well and then swim out from the anchor just sort of directly out now oysters appear individually so it is quite a tough thing to spot them they're notoriously difficult to find there you go there's one there look, look how difficult that is that is an oyster and another one there there's a little patch of them here around this piece of coral and coral is often the key for these things. Some say you can find some by the yacht, but I've had no luck with that yet. And they're just slightly larger objects. And you can eat these raw. They do go off after a few days. But if you want something a bit different, they're just there in the water and they will respawn back in this location again. Let's have a look at them in the inventory. I'm going to get past this section here. And oysters are over here, you can see. You can just eat them. Gives you uh, not a bad boost at all. And as you saw, because I knew where they were, that was actually quite quick and efficient to get. But in other locations, they are very hard to find. So the anchor is my tip to find oysters. Arrows are an option. They're pretty limited as far as damage is concerned when you use them they do the original damage that the arrow would do plus a small amount of damage over time but really one of their main things is they will slow down 
the the prey, the uh, cannibal. And you can see all three are poisoned here. Now when you make poison arrows, you can use berries or mushrooms, and they all have the same effect. And you can't use poison on bone arrows, so just bear that in mind. I find I have really little use for them. If you can get a headshot with an arrow, it's much quicker. But if you are being chased, you can see they've slightly slowed down and they will do slightly less damage. Another tip, which again is not obvious from the key bindings, is how to switch the types of arrow that you have. So you've got your bow here. This is the basic bow. All you have to do is look down and you'll see on the right hand side of the screen an R appears. Now it only appears when you're looking down. So you look down, press the R and it will cycle you through your different types of arrow that you've got in your backpack. Just like that. Okay, for this tip we're going to have a look at something that I know people ask me and it's not exactly clear when you look at the key bindings. But if you want to assign an object to a slot and you get four slots one two three four for your backpack and this is how you do it so I want to assign something to slot two so we'll go into the backpack now you can actually click on the backpack now to utilize one of these slots you can see here I've got booze in two I don't want booze in two I'm going to put in the fixing axe as you'll see here this repair tool all right so what you do is you right click on the backpack and it's it comes across here onto the central um, crafting area and then you right click on the axe itself it then comes up with this combine wheel that we're so used to seeing and um, you right click that and then it gives you an option of which one to select press the number okay two and that is now, as you can see, attached to the front of the backpack. Now if I remove that and go back out to the inventory, that will now appear when I press 2, just like that. And that means I can... When you're exploring the caves and you're having to swim, it can be quite disorientating. But when you're in the water, the light on the rebreather comes on and shows you where you're going. But keep an eye out for the shimmering blue reflections. You can see they're on the stones here. When you're swimming through the water, those can be spotted. And they give an indication where you can come up and explore this particular part of the cave. You see here it gives you that clue so I would look out for that when you're swimming because it can be quite disorientating as you move further into the game you may decide that you need to attract some mutants the best way to do this is to well The best way to do this is to build bonfires. They really do the trick. If you want to get mutants down to your base, and there are some reasons to do that. Some of them may be that you want to hunt, just generally test your test your metal, but secondly, you could be looking at um, gathering the armor from the mutants, as we mentioned earlier. And you can set up traps, obviously, to try and deal with them, take them down. They will outrun you. This one will definitely outrun you. So just be careful. But bonfires is my tip for getting mutants to your base if you want to get the best armor in-game. Okay, so those are my 10 pro tips for the forest. I'm going to be doing some more. I hope you found them useful. If you did, click the thumbs up. And if you're not subbed already, it'd be awesome if you could. There's a whole range of forest content on my channel from uh, traps to tips to looking at some of the massive bases that I've built over the years. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch up with you very soon.